In this video, we're going to change the way our backend is being deployed. So before we were using Heroku and we were pushing a Docker image. We're going to change it to in this video is similar to what we had in the last video when we were doing it with our front end. So I'm going to do a git push up to GitHub and then it's going to send the code to Heroku and then Heroku is going to build the code and deploy the application. And the cool thing is by the end of the video, now I only have to git push once and both my front end and my back end will be deployed to both Netlify and Heroku and doesn't require me to do any other changes. So to do this, I have made a little list and there's some fixes that we need to make that I've just noticed that have uh, basically things I didn't solve when we were setting them up. And the first has to do with us creating the Typeform connection here. So in production, I actually explicitly import the entities that we have and this is in the server utils create Typeform connection. And in our entity, we now have a third one called message. So I just need to grab that one as well. So I'm going to say message and import that from the entity. Now the next thing has to do with our package.json in the server. So when we build, what it's doing is it's taking our code and compiling it to JavaScript. But what I noticed when I built this lately, so if I go to packages server, so I built the code yesterday and I noticed just the structure of the um, dist folder is a little bit different. I guess because we're on, I'm currently on TypeScript 2.9, I believe in this project. Um, and I guess the structure of that structures the code a little differently. And I believe this should be the same way in TypeScript 3, which by the way, we'll be upgrading in a future video. Um, but take a look at what dist looks like now. So now there's uh, the common, which we rely on, and there's also server. So that just kind of messes up what our build does. You'll notice how there's this modules folder and we have basically all our GraphQL there. Because before we weren't expecting there to be a server here and then to also have this stuff here. So he, I just need to change this command right here. So when we build now, um, we're gonna go inside of the dist directory. We're gonna say server slash source. So now when I build, you'll notice the difference. Instead of having the modules here, it's gonna actually have the modules in the right place. Um, so now inside of server modules, you'll see, for example, we also have the schema, the GraphQL stuff. All right, so that we're now building correctly on the server side. Um, the next thing is to set up a post install. But before we get into that, uh, we, can do, we can do this because this is another server change. Um, I found out about this later, but that's okay. So in the start server, we are using Redis for PubSub. Now we're using the default Redis connection, which does not work in Heroku. We have a URL, and if we take a look what we're doing in Redis here, we actually use an environment variable called the Redis URL to know how to connect. And that is only in production. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna say process.env.nodeinv, and if we're in production, we're gonna pass in a different object. So here I have two empty objects, but if we're in production, I'm gonna add a parameter, which is the connection. Now the connection is, I'm gonna pass the Redis connection string. Now the TypeScript is not typed to allow this, but the library itself allows this. So I'm just gonna cast this as anything. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is after this project is installed by Heroku. So when we push this to Heroku, it's gonna yarn install, it's gonna get all the dependencies, but before it can be run, the code has to be compiled. So one way we can get Heroku to do that for us is to add a hook. So if we go to our root package, package.json, we can add a special script called post install. So this is something that's gonna be called after the entire project is installed. In our case, we'd like to build the, the TypeScript projects that are used on the server, which we actually have a command right here for us to use. So I'm just gonna say yarn run build server. So now whenever someone runs yarn install in the root directory, which Heroku will do, after it's complete, it will build the server, which will compile our code. The next thing to do is add a proc file. So this is something we're gonna add to the root directory and this is how Heroku knows how to start our project. Um, and this is kind of similar to how we did in the Docker file. Um, at the end where we kind of CD into a working directory 
and then we tell it to run the uh, index.js file. So in this case, we say web, and we're going to tell Heroku to cd into packages slash server, and we're going to say and, and now we want it to run the JavaScript code, which is in the dist package or dist folder. So I'm going to say node dist slash, and then server, and then to start it, it's going to be in source, um, and then index.js. So server source index.js. And uh, so the Heroku will run this to actually start up the server itself. And then uh, the last thing to do is to set up Heroku itself. So uh, we don't need that. OK, so when I was setting up Heroku, um, whenever I would do a git push, for whatever reason, it would ask me a message. There's like a Heroku YAML file that they've added. Um, we don't want to use the Heroku YAML file. Um, and there's a, uh, when this little pop-up comes up, you can just select that you want to use, I think it was called like stable Heroku you can switch to or something. There's like an option to switch away. So do that if that message comes up. Um, but we're going to add a uh, front end host. So this is setting an environment variable. So uh, this is something that our server uses. So I'm saying Heroku config set, and then the name of the environment variable is front end host. Now for me, my front end, this is your Netlify front end. So mine is called Blissful Babbage. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in there. Um, and I'm not going to include the slash at the end, but I don't think it matters. Um, uh, missing my required flag. OK, so I, here I'm not setting what the name of my uh, Heroku app is, which I think I have set and to deploy my server. So this thing called uh, Calm Citadel is the name of mine. So I'm going to copy, and we're just going to add that as a flag. So now it, I had to do that because Heroku didn't recognize this as a repository. So here I'm specifying the exact app that I uh, want to deploy to. So this is something, this is the same one I used before when we set up Docker. All right, so I now have the environment variable. We're good to actually uh, deploy this. So now to deploy this, I need to actually add Heroku as a Git branch. So before we even get into setting up GitHub, I just want to be able to deploy this thing to Heroku. So I want to Git push directly to Heroku. So to do that, uh, we, this is deploying by uh, Git. We need to add Heroku as a remote repository. So I'm going to copy this. And again, I need to paste in this com citadel because that's the name of my application. I believe this dash a flag here is uh, just short for the dash dash app flag. So when I run that, I now have a new branch created um, called Heroku, and that's what I need to push to, or not a new branch, but a new uh, remote. Um, so if you don't have that, that's how you can add the remote Heroku. So now I'm on branch 65, and I'd like to push this to the Heroku remote. But before I do, I want to commit. So I'm just going to say get ready for Heroku deploy. So now the difference, just to be clear, about this deployment versus what we did before is we're not using our Docker file. Instead, we're pushing our source code, and then Heroku is installing the dependencies, building our TypeScript code, and then running it. So let's do git push Heroku. And now this is when I was testing it earlier. I don't need test. So the branch I want to push is 65 um, Heroku GitHub deploys. OK. So now, if I just run it like so, you'll notice it pushed OK, but then it says it's skipping the build. And the reason for that is, as you see, this branch is not the master branch. So to specify that you want to push this to Heroku's master branch, you do colon master at the end. So now it's going to push up the code. And uh, OK, it doesn't like it because I've pushed up some code before. If this is the case that you get, I'm going to force push because I know that this is the code that, uh, or the, the deployment that I want. I'm happy with this code. So I did dash f at the end to force this push. So now it's going to push up my code. And then similar to what we saw yesterday on Netlify, it's going to build our source, and we can actually see the logs as it's running it. So right now, it's about to run yarn install. Um, and, and notice it comes already with the latest yarn, so that's nice. So I'm just going to let this run, and uh, we'll see when this is finished. All right, so mine finished building, and it was successful. 
And I just want to show you guys, if you scroll up in the middle of your build, you can actually see it running, uh, the post install. So right here, after it finished installing, you can see it ran Lerna run build, or our command up here where we said build server, and then it would actually build the TypeScript code, and you can even see the command that's running. Here are the two commands that runs actually compile the TypeScript code. But all right, so now I have mine deployed, and I can actually click on it and come look at the GraphQL Playground and do whatever I want with it now. And uh, we could stop here if we wanted to. So now all you have to do is do git push uh, to the Heroku branch, and your code will go ahead and get built. Now we're going to take this one step further, but this is optional, um, and that is to go ahead and link this with GitHub. So if you go to the deploy on the Heroku dashboard, so here's the app, same Citadel one, um, you can see how you're deploying it. So right now I'm using the Heroku Git, but I can switch this over to GitHub. Now I've already linked my GitHub, but you can do that. And then I'm just gonna search for full stack and add my project that I want to. So here's the GitHub repo. I'm gonna connect it. And now I can pick a branch that I want it to deploy to. So for me, that's gonna be prod and I'm gonna enable automatic deploys. So now as it says right here, every time you push the prod, it's gonna go ahead and deploy um, to Heroku. So now if I want to, I can push this and I'm just gonna clear here. So git push um, origin 65. Well, I guess I was gonna just push this branch like this. Um, I guess I need to merge it. So let's go git checkout prod and git merge the branch we just added here. And now I'm gonna say git push origin master, or not master, prod. So this is just gonna push up to GitHub. And now this will redeploy both Netlify and Heroku. So in one push, I just deployed both the front end and back end. And now you'll see, um, you don't actually see the commands and whatnot to see it rebuilding. Um, so that's it for this video, guys. If you had any trouble getting Heroku set up, another command I recommend running is Heroku logs. Here you can see kind of what's happening with your server and any output that it may be displaying.